always believed that if you worked hard enough, life would eventually reward you. I guess that's what made me Miranda Thompson, top of my class in law school, and engaged to the love of my life, Michael. He was everything I thought I wanted, smart, charming, and ambitious. We met in a constitutional law class, and it didn't take long for our study sessions to turn into late-night talks about our future together. Can you believe it, Miranda? In just a week, you'll be Mrs. Miranda Richardson, Michael said, his eyes sparkling with excitement as he wrapped his arms around me. I laughed, leaning into his embrace. I still can't believe you convinced me to take your last name, but yes, I can't wait. But beneath the surface of our perfect little world, there were cracks. My mom, Linda, remarried when I was just a toddler, and my stepdad, Greg, was the only father figure I knew. My biological dad, Dr. James Thompson, was a big shot in the medical world, but just a shadow in my life. We talked occasionally, and he sent gifts on my birthdays, but that was it. Mom made it clear she didn't want him around, and I never pushed it. As the wedding day approached, I couldn't help but feel a pang of sadness that he wouldn't be there. You okay, honey? My mom asked, noticing my distant look as we went over the seating chart. Yeah, just... I wish Dad could be here, I admitted, referring to my biological father. Linda sighed, her expression hardening. Miranda, we've been over this. Your stepfather has been more of a dad to you than James ever was. Let's not ruin your big day by bringing up the past. I nodded, not wanting to argue. It was easier that way. My stepsister Sarah was the complete opposite of me. At 20, she was the wild child, always seeking attention, especially from Greg and Mom. They doted on her, and I often felt like an afterthought. Are you seriously still moping about Daddy not coming? Grow up, Miranda, Sarah chided, rolling her eyes as she walked into the room. Sarah, that's enough, Linda scolded, but her tone was gentle, almost indulgent. The day before the wedding, the tension was palpable. Michael seemed distant, and Sarah was unusually smug. I tried to shake off the feeling that something was off. Hey, are you sure you're okay? I asked Michael as we were setting up the venue. He forced a smile. Just pre-wedding jitters, babe. Everything's going to be perfect. I wanted to believe him, but something in the pit of my stomach told me otherwise. I wish I had listened to that feeling. The day I had been dreaming of since I was a little girl had finally arrived. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, and everything seemed perfect. I stood in front of the mirror, my wedding dress hugging every curve perfectly. You look beautiful, Miranda, my mom said, her voice soft, a rare moment of tenderness between us. Thanks, Mom. I just wish Dad could see me, I replied feeling a familiar ache in my heart. You have us, Miranda. That's enough, she said, her tone firm, as if closing the topic for good. The ceremony was like something out of a fairy tale. I walked down the aisle, my heart pounding with excitement. Michael stood there, looking handsome as ever, but his eyes, they didn't have the usual warmth. I pushed the thought away, convincing myself it was just nerves. As we stood facing each other, the officiant began, Do you, Michael Richardson, take Miranda Thompson to be your lawfully wedded wife? Before Michael could respond, the doors at the back of the hall burst open. It was Sarah, her eyes wild, her face flushed. Stop! Stop the wedding! She yelled, her voice echoing through the silent hall. Everyone turned, stunned. I felt like the ground was slipping away beneath me. Sarah, what are you doing? I demanded, my voice shaking. She looked at me, then at Michael, a twisted smile on her face. I'm pregnant, Miranda, and Michael is the father. The room erupted into chaos. My mom and Greg rushed toward Sarah while I stood there, frozen. Is this true, Michael? I asked, my voice barely a whisper. Michael wouldn't meet my eyes. I... I'm sorry, Miranda. I didn't mean for this to happen. I felt like I couldn't breathe. The world spun around me. 
Sorry. You destroy our future, and all you can say is sorry? I spat, my voice rising. My mom came to me, her expression stern. Miranda, calm down. We need to handle this sensibly. Calm down? My fiancé cheated on me with my sister, and you want me to calm down? I couldn't believe her words. Miranda, it's a complicated situation. Michael is a decent man. He wants to take responsibility for the child, Greg added. A decent man? A decent man doesn't cheat on his fiancé with her sister? I shot back, my anger boiling over. The guests murmured among themselves, some looking at me with pity, others with judgment. I couldn't take it anymore. I ran out of the hall, the sound of my wedding dress tearing as I pushed through the doors. That day, my dream wedding turned into a nightmare. The betrayal by Michael and Sarah was a harsh blow, but the lack of support from my own family was a stab to the heart. It was clear where their loyalties lay, and it wasn't with me. The morning after the wedding that never was felt surreal. I woke up in my childhood room, the white dress now stained and torn, a painful reminder of the debacle. My phone was overflowing with messages and missed calls, but I ignored them all. I couldn't face the world, not yet. I could hear my mom and Greg talking downstairs, their voices a low hum. I had no desire to join them. The way they had sided with Sarah and Michael was a betrayal I couldn't digest. I decided then and there that I needed a fresh start, away from all this mess. I pick it up my phone and dialed the number I knew by heart but seldom called. Dad, I said hesitantly when the call connected. Miranda, is everything okay? His voice was lissad with concern. Dad, the wedding didn't happen. I need to get away from here. Can I come stay with you? I asked, my voice breaking. There was a brief pause. Of course, Miranda. Come as soon as you can, he replied, his tone reassuring. Packing was a blur. I threw clothes and essentials into a suitcase, not caring about the order. When I went downstairs with the suitcase in tow, my mom looked up, startled. Where do you think you're going? She asked, her tone sharp. I'm leaving, Mom. I can't stay here, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. You can't just run away from your problems, Miranda, Greg chimed in, his expression disapproving. This isn't running away. It's choosing not to stay where I'm clearly not wanted, I countered, my resolve firm. My mom's face softened slightly. Miranda, we're your family. You belong here. You made your choice, Mom. Now I'm making mine. I said, turning towards the door. The drive to my dad's city was long and gave me plenty of time to think. I felt a mix of fear, excitement, and uncertainty. Starting over wasn't going to be easy, but it was necessary. When I arrived, my dad was waiting at the door. Miranda, I'm so sorry about what happened, he said, pulling me into a hug. Thanks, Dad. I just need to figure things out. Start fresh, I replied grateful for his support. Over the next few days, Dad helped me settle in. He even introduced me to an old friend of his, Mr. Anderson, who ran a prestigious law firm in the city. Miranda's an excellent lawyer. She graduated top of her class, Dad boasted during the introduction. Mr. Anderson looked at me, his eyes assessing. We could use someone like you on our team. Why don't you come in for an interview next week? I was taken aback by the offer, but managed a grateful smile. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. I'd like that. As I started to rebuild my life in this new city, I realized that sometimes the worst things in life can lead you to where you truly belong. I was ready to face whatever came my way with a new sense of determination and hope. I had been working at Anderson & Associates for about six months when it happened. My life was finally on track, and I was slowly regaining my confidence. That's when Michael Richardson, of all people, walked into the office. I was at my desk, buried in case files, when I heard his all-too-familiar voice. Good morning, everyone. I'm Michael Richardson, the new associate. My head snapped up, and our eyes met. He looked as shocked to see me as I was to see him. The room suddenly felt too small, the air too thick. What are you doing here? I asked, 
my voice barely above a whisper. Michael cleared his throat, regaining his composure. I was hired last week. I didn't know you worked here. Mr. Anderson, oblivious to the tension, clapped a hand on Michael's shoulder. Miranda, meet Michael, our new star. You two should get along well, both top of your classes. I forced a smile, feeling like I was going to be sick. Nice to meet you, Michael, I lied. As the days went by, working with Michael became my new reality. I avoided him as much as possible, but it was hard in the small office space. Then one day, he cornered me in the break room. Miranda, we need to talk, he said, his tone serious. There's nothing to talk about, I replied, trying to move past him. He blocked my way. Please, hear me out. I'm, I'm sorry for everything. Sorry doesn't change what happened, Michael. You ruined everything, I said, my voice rising. I know, and I regret it every day. But you need to know, Sarah lost the baby because of the stress from the wedding. She can't have children now. That's on you, he accused. I stared at him incredulously. On me? You cheat on me? And somehow it's my fault? You're unbelievable. Michael's face hardened. You could have handled it better. You didn't have to run away. I laughed bitterly. Handled it better? You destroyed my life, Michael. You and Sarah. Don't you dare put that on me. He opened his mouth to respond, but I didn't want to hear it. I pushed past him and left the room, the nerve of him blaming me for his and Sarah's actions. It was like a slap in the face, a reminder of the pain and humiliation. I had gone through as I sat back at my desk trying to calm my racing heart. I realized this was just the beginning. Working with Michael was going to be a challenge, but I was determined not to let him get to me. I had come too far to be dragged down by his guilt and manipulations. The annual corporate party at Anderson & Associates was something I had been looking forward to, a chance to let loose and celebrate our hard work. That was until I found out Michael and his sister Sarah would be there. I had managed to avoid Sarah since the disaster of a wedding, and the thought of facing her now twisted my stomach into knots. I arrived at the party dressed in a simple but elegant black dress, hoping to blend into the background. The atmosphere was lively, with music playing and colleagues laughing. I was grabbing a drink when I heard a familiar grating voice. Well, well, if it isn't the runaway bride, Sarah sneered, sidling up to me with a glass of champagne in her hand. I took a deep breath, trying to keep my composure. What are you doing here, Sarah? Oh, Michael invited me. After all, I am family, she said, her eyes scanning me up and down. I clenched my jaw. I'm not going to let you ruin this night for me, I said. Sarah laughed, a cruel, mocking sound. I already ruined your life, didn't I? Or should I say, you ruined it yourself with your little tantrum? Before I could respond, Michael joined us, his expression tense. Sarah, let's not do this here. Oh, come on, Michael. Let's see if Miranda can handle the truth for once, Sarah taunted. Michael turned to me, his eyes cold. You should leave, Miranda. You're not wanted here. I stared at him in disbelief. You can't be serious. This is my workplace. I have every right to be here. Sarah smirked. Look at you, playing the victim as always. You're pathetic, Miranda. My anger boiled over. I am not the one who slept with my sister's fiancé. I am not the one who lied and manipulated people. You are the pathetic ones. Michael stepped closer, his voice a low growl. You need to watch your mouth, Miranda. You're walking on thin ice. I met his gaze, unflinching. I'm not afraid of you, Michael, or my twisted sister. Just then, Mr. Anderson appeared, sensing the tension. Is everything all right here? He asked, looking between us. I took a deep breath, trying to calm my racing heart. Yes, Mr. Anderson, everything is fine. I was just leaving. As I walked away, I could feel their eyes on my back but I held my head high. I wouldn't let them see how much they affected me. I wouldn't give them that satisfaction. That night, as I lay in bed, 
I realized that this was far from over. Michael and Sarah were determined to make my life difficult, but I was just as determined to stand my ground. I wouldn't let them break me, not again. The atmosphere in the team was tense. I felt the stares of my colleagues, heard their whispers which became quieter as I passed by. Michael tried to tell everyone his version of events. It was painful because I am a victim of that story, and from his words, I turned into a sophisticated sadist because of which my sister suffered. My boss, Mr. Anderson, supported me, and that was the most important thing. Without his support, I would not have been able to work in such a toxic atmosphere. The only one who didn't know about all this was my father, but that dinner changed everything. Halfway through the meal, my dad, sensing my discomfort, quietly asked, Miranda, you seem troubled. What's on your mind? I hesitated, not sure if I should bring it up, but I needed answers. It's about Sarah and Michael, I began, my voice low. They've been telling everyone that I caused Sarah's miscarriage, that the stress from the wedding was too much for her. Dad's expression changed, a mix of concern and something else, hesitation maybe. Miranda, I as a doctor am bound by medical ethics, but you're my daughter and you deserve the truth. I leaned in, my heart pounding. What truth, Dad? He took a deep breath. Sarah came to me a while back. She was having trouble getting pregnant, but Miranda, she didn't have a miscarriage. She had an abortion. She chose to end the pregnancy herself. The words hit me like a physical blow. An abortion? But why would she lie about that? Dad shook his head, his expression pained. I don't know, Miranda, but she was very clear about her decision. The room seemed to spin around me. Sarah's lies, the deceit, it was deeper than I ever imagined. I felt a surge of anger, not just at her, but at myself for believing her for letting her words hurt me. I excused myself from the table, my mind racing. I couldn't confront Sarah or Michael, not yet. I needed a plan, a way to expose her lies without causing more drama. It had to be cunning, something that would reveal the truth in a way they couldn't deny. As I drove back home, ideas started to form in my mind. Sarah had played us all for fools, but I wasn't going to let her get away with it. It was time to turn the tables. Armed with the truth about Sarah, I knew I had to act smart. I couldn't just blurt out what I knew. It needed to be strategic, undeniable. That's when the idea of a sting operation came to me. I remembered hearing about a private investigator, a woman reputed for her skill in uncovering truths people wanted to keep buried. I decided to meet her. Miss Thompson, I understand you need my services. The PI a woman named Rita, said as we sat in her inconspicuous office. Yes, it's about my stepsister Sarah. She's lied about something significant, and I need proof, I explained, trying to keep my emotions in check. Rita leaned forward, her eyes sharp. What kind of proof are we talking about? She claimed she had a miscarriage caused by stress I supposedly inflicted, but I know for a fact it was an abortion, I said, feeling a twinge of anger at the memory. Rita nodded, a plan already forming in her mind. People slip up, especially when they think they're in a safe space. You said she likes to drink at a bar on weekends? Yes, she's there almost every Saturday, I confirmed. Good, I'll befriend her there. If she's as loose lipped as you say when she's drunk, it shouldn't be too hard to get her to spill the truth, Rita said confidently. The following week was agonizing. I waited, hoping Rita would come through. Then, on Tuesday morning, she called me. I got it, Miranda. Sarah spilled everything during a drunken rant. It's all on tape. I met Rita that evening to listen to the recording. Hearing Sarah's voice slurring and boasting about how she fooled everyone, how the baby was never Michael's and how she never wanted it sent chills down my spine. Rita, this is exactly what I needed. How can I ever thank you? 
I asked. Just seeing justice served is enough for me, Rita replied, a small smile on her face. Now armed with the truth, I knew it was time to confront Sarah and Michael, but I wanted to be careful to reveal the truth in a way that left no room for doubt or further lies. I planned to invite them to a neutral place, somewhere public where they couldn't cause a scene. The day of the confrontation, my nerves were on edge, but I felt a sense of empowerment too. This was it, the moment of truth. The day had come to confront Sarah and Michael with the truth. My heart was racing as I sat in the corner of the coffee shop, waiting for them to arrive. I had chosen this place for its public setting, hoping it would keep emotions in check. Sarah walked in first, her usual confident self, followed by Michael, who looked unsure. They sat down opposite me, Sarah's eyes narrowing slightly. So, Miranda, what's so important that you dragged us here? Do you finally want to apologize and get out of the company? Sarah asked. I took a deep breath, my hands gripping the envelope containing the recording. I know everything, Sarah, I said. Her face went pale, then flushed with anger. What are you talking about, Miranda? Michael looked between us, confused. Sarah, what is she talking about? I pushed the envelope across the table. I hired a private investigator. She recorded Sarah admitting everything at a bar. It wasn't a miscarriage. She lied. Sarah's eyes widened in shock, and then her gaze turned to one of malice. You sneaky little... Michael cut her off, his voice shaking. Is it true, Sarah? Did you lie to me? Sarah opened and closed her mouth, looking like a fish out of water. Finally, she slumped back in her chair, defeated. Yes, it's true. I had an abortion. The baby wasn't yours. Michael looked like he had been punched in the gut. He turned to me. Miranda, I... I'm so sorry. I didn't know. I'll file for divorce, and maybe we... I looked at him, feeling a strange sense of detachment. Your apology doesn't change what happened, Michael. But at least now you know the truth. Sarah stood up abruptly, her chair screeching against the floor. This isn't over, Miranda. You'll regret this. But I didn't feel scared. For the first time in a long time, I felt in control. The truth is out, Sarah. There's nothing left to hide. As they left the coffee shop, keeping their distance from each other, I remained seated, feeling a weight lift off my shoulders. It was finally over. The lies, the deceit, the pain. It was all out in the open. The next day at work, word had spread about the confrontation. Colleagues who had once looked at me with pity and contempt now greeted me with respect. Mr. Anderson called me into his office, a look of concern on his face. Miranda, I heard about what happened. Are you okay? He asked, genuine worry in his tone. I smiled, feeling a sense of peace. Yes, Mr. Anderson, I'm more than okay. I'm free. As I walked back to my desk, I felt a new sense of purpose. I had faced my demons, and I had come out stronger. My past no longer defined me. I was ready to move on, to build a future on my terms.